Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. We resume our bleeding and coagulation playlist. In the previous video, we have discussed Bernard Soulier syndrome. Today, we'll talk about Glensman thrombosthenia. That said, now let's get started. It's my bleeding and coagulation disorders. 70 videos here. Please watch them in order. Let me answer the question of the previous video. Which of the following graphs represent Bernard Soulier? Which one represents normal? Which one represents storage spool? If you have watched my previous video, know that this one is the normal. So, normal. Cool. How about this one? This one is a, like a problem. Like here, the primary wave or the first wave is fine. But there is no secondary wave. However, here, there is no primary wave. There is no secondary wave. So, of course, the one that sucks is Bernard Soulier. So Bernard Soulier is this one. Why? Because in Bernard Soulier, there is no GP1B. So you cannot adhere. If you cannot adhere, you cannot secrete. Uh-huh. So if I cannot adhere, and I cannot secrete, and I cannot aggregate, I cannot do anything. So it's a flat curve. But in storage pool disease, you can adhere because the GP1B is fine. However, you cannot later aggregate. Aha! Uh -huh. So storage pool disease is less evil than Bernard Soulier which gives us storage pool here. Since we have discussed all of this in the previous video, we'll go very quickly. Steps of hemostasis are many. Glensman is a problem with primary hemostasis. The platelet is the issue, especially GP2B3A. Since Glensman thrombosthenia is a problem with primary hemostasis, bleeding time will be high. How about platelet count? It's usually normal. Do not give these patients antiplatelet drugs such as aspirin. Primary hemostasis or platelet plug formation, adhesion, activation, then aggregation. Where was the problem in Bernard Soulier? It was here, specifically the GP1B. Where is the problem in Glensman thrombosthenia? It's here in the aggregation, specifically in the GP2B3A. What are the diseases that affect GP2B3A? You have Glensman thrombosthenia, you have uremia, you have paraproteinemia, and you have immune thrombocytopenia, which is ITP. Normally, platelets are cruising through the bloodstream. Once they find an error and injury, they go crazy. Once they form their fake legs, they will adhere by the GP1B. After adhesion, they activate, they secrete ADP and thromboxane A2. This ADP will help express the ADP-dependent GP2B3A receptor. The platelet will use this GP2B3A to aggregate to combine with another platelet. Here is platelet aggregation, so there is a big difference between adhesion and aggregation. Adhesion is between the platelet and the endothelium. Aggregation is between the platelet and another freaking platelet. The problem in Glensman thrombosthenia is here, in the temporary platelet plug, in the platelet. It's here, baby. Is Glensman thrombosthenia a problem with platelet number or platelet function with platelet function? If it's a problem in platelet function, bleeding time will be prolonged. Platelet aggregometry could be abnormal. Please help me reach 250,000 subscribers by the end of the month and I will give you something cool, a gift. Let's talk about thrombosthenia. It's a problem in platelet function. It's a problem in the GP2B3A receptor. Bernard Soulier was a problem with GP1B, hashtag adhesion, but Glensman thrombosthenia is the problem in GP2B3A, hashtag aggregation. Not just Glensman thrombosthenia, but also uremia, paraproteinemia, immune thrombocytopenia, which is ITP. We have talked about the difference between GP1B and GP2B3A in previous videos. Remember that Glensman is a problem GP2B3A. There is no platelet aggregation. It's influenced by ADP. And that's why when you try to do platelet aggregometry in patients with Glensman, when you add ADP, you get no response from the patient because they are a patient with Glensman. Primary hemostasis disorders. The problem is either in the platelet or in the vessel. Problem is in the platelet. Decreased platelet number called quantitative, called thrombocytopenia, or decreased platelet function, called qualitative, called thrombosthenia. Regarding thrombosthenia, the problem could be in the platelet adhesion, platelet storage pool, or problem with secretion, or problem with aggregation. Where is Glensman thrombosthenia? Glensman is here, together with uremia, paraproteinemia, and immune thrombocytopenia. So Bernard Soulier syndrome is a problem with platelet adhesion. Storage pool disease is a problem with the platelet storage pool. No duh. 
Alpha granule deficiency and delta granule deficiencies are problem with platelet secretion. Can you give me an example of alpha granule deficiency? Of course, it's called gray platelet syndrome. How about delta granule deficiency? We have three diseases. Shidiak Higashi syndrome, Wiskut Aldrich syndrome, and thrombocytopenia with an absent radius or TAR. And of course, as you know, Glenzman thrombosthenia is a problem with platelet aggregation, but not just Glenzman thrombosthenia, also uremia, paraproteinemia, and even immune thrombocytopenia. Whether your problem is in the platelet or the vessel wall, or whether the problem is in the platelet number or platelet function, primary hemostasis manifests clinically as mucocutaneous bleeding. Muco, cutaneous, cutaneous, petechia, purpura, and ecchymosis, these are the biggest. Mucosal bleeding, epistaxis, bleeding from superficial stretch, uh, easy bruising, gingival bleeding, menorrhagia, bleeding after circumcision, etc. There is no deep or anatomical bleeding in case of primary hemostasis defect. There is no lateral bleeding. There is no hemarthrosis. There is no bleeding into deep muscle. There is no bleeding in the GI or bleeding into your brain most of the time. You'll find these symptoms in secondary hemostasis defects, such as hemophilia, but not in the primary. Inside those lovely thrombocytes, aka platelets, in the cytoplasm we have actin and myosin fibers, and of course they are contractile. But not just that, we have something else called thrombosthenin. I love this name. What does IN mean? It means protein. Thrombo is the thrombocyte. It's a freaking platelet. Asthene from sthenos, which was a Greek god for strength. So, it's a protein that gives the platelets strength. Love it! Thrombosthenin will help the clot retracts, releasing the serum. We have talked about this before in my video about the difference between plasma and serum. Thrombosthenin is deficient in cases of Glenzman thrombosthenia. Of course, thrombosthenia, your platelets are weak. Why are they weak? Because they lack the protein of strength. I'm having a blast. Bernard Soulier, the problem was here. Glenzman, the problem is here. GP2B3A receptor. There is no platelet aggregation. Glenzman baby etiology, congenital, it's inherited, it's hereditary, specifically autosomal, recessive epidemiology, infant or child usually appears after, circ or you'll discover after circumcision. Pathophysiology, deficient or defective, GP, not 1B, mm -mm. 2B, 3A, also known as alpha 3B, beta 3, which will lead to decreased platelet aggregation. Of course, if there is no plate aggregation, there will be no blood coagulation most of the time. Clinically, superficial mucocutaneous bleeding, petechia purpura ecchymosis, and mucous membrane bleeding, such as menorrhagia bleeding after circumcision, epistaxis, gingival bleeding, and easy bruising. Diagnosis plate count is. I'm so sorry, it's not low. It's normal. Bleeding time will be prolonged. How about platelet aggregometry? Now, this is the opposite to Bernard Soulier syndrome. Because in Bernard Soulier, ADP was fine, but Ristocetin was abnormal. This is the opposite. With ADP, there is low aggregation, but with Ristocetin, there is normal aggregation. Peripheral smear, normal size platelet. It's not giant. There is no macro thrombocytopenia. There is no macro and there is no thrombocytopenia because the platelet count is usually normal. Treatment. If the patient has bad platelets, give the patient platelets. You can give desmopressin. It might help. Tranexamic acid or epsilon amino caprobic acid. Recombinant factor 7. Hematopoietic stem cell transplant when the bleep hits the fan. Just one day ago, I had this promo code 40 off cancer to get a 40% off any product on my website, but this is now sold out. It flew faster than an elf from a shelf. But now we have 35 off cancer to get 35% off any product on my website for 20 students only. Thank you for everyone who went to my website. I really appreciate you guys. Thank you for supporting my work. We have many types of Glenzman. We have inherited and acquired. Inherited is the autosomal recessive. Acquired is autoimmune, such as with lupus and ITP. So with lupus and ITP, you can find Glenzman. Yes, it can happen. Two types of Glenzman thrombocytopenia. This is the inherited one. Test type one, which is complete deficiency. Type two, it's partial deficiency of GP2B3. Glenzman thrombocytopenia can accompany leukocyte adhesion deficiency or adhesion defect. Ristocetin cofactor assay, or RIPA, which is ristocetin-induced platelet aggregometry, can help us differentiate between Bernard Soulier and Glenzman, because in Bernard Soulier it's low, but in Glenzman RIPA is within normal limits. Remember that ristocetin-induced platelet aggregometry is abnormal in von Willebrand and Bernard Soulier, but it is normal in Glenzman. 
Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. Make sure to hit the bell to get notified because sometimes I release surprise videos. Go to my website to get my new anti-cancer pharmacology course, and I also have hematology cases. Thank you so much for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionist, where medicine makes perfect sense.